Um, but returning to the general idea of remote sensing systems, in the broadest, again, in a very broad sense, we can talk about two major kinds. We can talk about active remote sensing systems, and we can talk about passive remote sensing systems, depending on the way that they operate. Remote sensing systems have to have some way to, um, some kind of generation of data, or some kind of generation of what they're going to be reflecting, uh, and then going to be collecting it. So there's also, so you have to have some source of something, and then you also have a collector that's going to be collecting information about whatever was emitted from this source. And then depending on how you set this up, this source and this collector, you either end up with an active or a passive system. Let me give you a great example of an active system. Okay, radar is remote sensing. If you want to be a specialist in radar, well, that's a remote sensing system. Um, and it is called an active system because you know, think about what you think of when you, you say radar. You, know, you think about this big dish, you know, and you think about it sending out those beeps, right? And then maybe there's an aircraft over here. Maybe you're thinking in terms of like military operations. And it's emitting, uh, you know, that beep, we'll say for here. And then it hits that aircraft and then turns back around and then the system collects what's being returned to it, right? and then says something about the speed of, you know, where that aircraft is, its speed, uh, where it's going based on sending out that signal and then measuring the return of that signal. So that's an active remote sensing system because it's actively emitting what it's going to measure the return of. And it can do that very well because it knows exactly what it emitted. You know, I, this particular signal at this particular frequency with this particular interval between and so forth and so on. And then the system got back something else and it runs its calculations. So radar, you know, they, they realized that this started, radar started when they were uh, in uh, World War II when they had radio broadcast towers by canals. And they're broadcasting radio signals and what they realized is that some, when they had one of these large warships that were coming down the canal, sometimes they would get interference. They'd get what they were broadcasting back. That it would be bouncing off the side of the ship and coming back to them. And eventually somebody said, well, wait a minute. We could probably, you know, accidental discovery there, but we could probably use that deliberately in order to uh, create something, a system for detection. And so they turned that into an active remote sensing system. Of course, uh, it has applications in you know, this sort of thing, but we also use radar. You can be a radar specialist uh, if you are interested in the environment uh, or especially uh, in uh, atmospheric sciences. Of course, meteorology uses radar all the time. You know, we turn on the radar, you know, the radar on the weather station to see information about rainfall and precipitation. So they use the active uh, remote sensing systems radar in meteorology, environmental uh, systems quite a bit. Uh, so that's a, a something that you can get into. Also, the most comprehensive elevation data sets that we have about our planet were created through the use of radar, actually space-borne radar systems. It was the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, if you look it up. Uh, you'll see different images sometimes of the space shuttle with this long boom out of its cargo uh, hold, and then it's also it's inverted. It's turned like upside down on the planet with this large boom extended with all of these dishes on the side of it. And what it's doing is they mounted radar to the space shuttle and then had the space shuttle fly all of these different orbits across the planet, sending down the radar signal, measuring its return, and that's how we created our most comprehensive elevation data set of the planet through uh, space-borne radar. Uh, so that is definitely a part of remote sensing. Uh, sonar is also an active remote sensing system. So of course it's used through water. Um, oceanography 
depending on what you think of its association with geography in general. But I mean, most of the elevation or the bathymetry data sets that we have a lot of, of the ocean floor were also collected through remote sensing. Uh, not This is not the passive, we're still on active over here. Sonar is an active system. You think about the uh, movies that you watch, the, the war movies about listening to the, the guys on sonar, they're broadcasting that ping, that sound, and then listening for the return. That's active remote sensing. Another one that we use a lot now is LIDAR, which is one based on light. We use it a lot in geography and geographic information systems as well. Um, often this is uh, mounted on an aircraft. There's a, if you're trying to do an elevation data set of a particular area, it's relatively easy now to be able to commission a LIDAR flight over an area in order to collect very detailed localized elevation information. If you think about it, what we have here is a plane you know, that they'll, you can commission to fly over and then what the LIDAR system is, it's mounted beneath the plane and basically it looks like a whole bunch of laser pointers and as the plane's flying over, active remote sensing system, except for instead of using like sound and sonar, what it uses is light and there are all these little laser pointers basically that it's sending out at as, you know, very defined intervals and then it's measuring how long it takes the light to return to it and then it knows how the, the, how the, the altitude of the aircraft depending on how long it takes the light to return it gets a measurement on how far the ground must be below and you can create some very detailed um, elevation models. They, uh, they also do this in urban areas you know, if you're looking to model a city, you know, of course you can get buildings, trees, you can get all kinds of things uh, by uh, remote sensing LIDAR detection. So those are active remote sensing systems and they're used quite a bit. Uh, but these contrast with the passive remote sensing systems. And basically the difference between a passive and an active system is that a passive system doesn't have any emitter it doesn't emit whatever it is it's measuring the return of. Okay, it's relying on whatever else is out there already in the environment and basically it's just listening with its collector for whatever comes back. This is predominantly the way that satellites work like the Landsat was a big mission for uh, Earth observation uh, and so forth. So you put this satellite in orbit and then for the most part it doesn't emit anything and measure its return. The Earth is being bombarded anyway with a tremendous amount of electromagnetic radiation. So you've got the Sun over here. The Sun emits some you know, electromagnetic radiation. It hits the Earth. Some of that bounces up into the collector and the satellite just collects whatever bounces up into it you know, as it goes around in its orbit. Of course, I mean, this is, like I said, there's a tremendous amount that you can say about all this because you have to think about, okay, what's the sun angle? I mean, of course, when the sunlight's coming through, it's getting dispersed and scattered in the atmosphere and then hitting the planet and then going through the atmosphere again and then up into the collector. And they account for all of that in remote sensing. I mean, you can study, you know, how do you account for all of that atmospheric distortion? sun angles and so forth when you're trying to collect this or trying to work with this kind of information. Um, but, basic, but basically that's what's going on. And it's kind of like our eyeballs, working on the same principles as our eyeballs. We just collect whatever it is that bounces off of you, the room, the chairs, everything else, and then I, uh, you know, our eyeballs process. Uh, so this, this kind of system uh, is predominantly when people talk about remote sensing like, if, like I said, if you were to go to, I was just at a geography conference over Thanksgiving, and if there is a session on remote sensing, then probably it's talking about these kinds of systems. They'll talk about, probably have special sessions on these kinds of things. But most of the time, even though remote sensing is much more broad than this, uh, if you go and talk to somebody and they say they're a remote sensing specialist, for the most part, they're talking about working with these kinds of systems. Um, the, 
these systems got started actually because they were designed for astronomical observation. That well, you know, we can't. We want to know something about some other star or some other, you know, looking for planets or something else that's out there in the universe. Well, we can't really use an active remote sensing system to do that. The distances are too great. We can't emit something and wait on its return. We'd be waiting around for thousands or millions of years. So we kind of have to collect whatever is being sent in the universe toward us. So that's how astronomical observation works as well. It's remote sensing turned around listening to the universe and seeing what comes into the collector and then doing science and me different methodologies for that. Eventually, somebody, when they were designing these systems, said, hey, wait a moment. Why don't we basically turn them around and look at ourselves and see what information we can collect about ourselves? Uh, and that's been extremely successful. That's, like I said, one of these major sources of data that we have about the planet. So that's why I say if you're studying something that can be studied or detected based on electromagnetic radiation bouncing off the planet and into a collector, you're good. You've got lots of data you can work with. Different remote sensing specialists specialize in different things. The University of Alabama uh, are the remote sensing specialists in the department who I took several classes from. He specialized in the remote sensing of water quality. He wanted to be able to determine what water quality was in different places, but he didn't want to have to go to every place. He wanted to be able to monitor water quality by satellite. Uh, he found that uh, in order to, I think it was oxygen or, or something like that, that some of the different chemicals that he wanted to be able to detect or pollutants that he wanted to detect, he would have the presence of different kinds of algae in a particular area if there was this particular kind of pollutant. So he realized if he could detect that, he could detect the pollutant. And then he discovered or, you know, they found out that the particular algae, when it's in a certain depth of water reflects electromagnetic radiation in a certain way and that can be detected by the satellites and so you know he pulls down the satellite imagery all this data and then looks for this reflectivity signal which we'll talk about more in a little bit, a little bit uh, for that algae and then is able to make determinations about water quality. That's basically what, how that works. Questions? Uh, okay, yeah, so, well, that kind of leads into, you know, why I talk about this now. Um, I talk about this now, I put this after we've been talking about rasters, because um, there are a few exceptions, but most of the time, it, well, like, all of the data that comes off of these kinds of satellites <coughs> are rasters. That's what you get. Uh, when you, an exception to that rule uh, is if you are working with raw LIDAR data, and you get what you get back, what they call a point cloud. You get a point for every single one of uh, the, the laser hits that's got a value. So that, when you get raw, unprocessed LIDAR data, you get back vector data. But in most of the other circumstances, especially our most common circumstance where we're talking about the Earth observation, what you get back is a raster. And you can take these rasters and we can put them uh, into GIS uh, you know, software packages. Most of the time, like if you go and you take the intro to um, remote sensing class or the advanced remote sensing class, you are going to uh, work with a different software package. There are software packages that are designed specifically to manipulate um, satellite imagery. It's got you know, special tools and so forth. But you can even bring satellite imagery into ArcGIS. It's not really its specialty. But if you have certain uh, uh, satellite images you want to download from NASA, you can do some basic satellite analysis, or satellite imagery analysis right in uh, ArcGIS. And, and you can, I mean, integration of a lot of them. Uh, I think it's very important to know, okay, well, I've got this particular kind of problem to solve. My basic GIS kind of problem solving flow through vector analysis or through raster analysis, uh, you know, that's good for these sorts of things. But if I need to be able to like, detect this particular algae, well, then let's go to remote sensing and bring that in and, and integrate uh, between those two things. Everything that you can do that we've talked about doing with rasters can basically be done with satellite imagery. I mean, talking about from the beginning, being able to reference them in space, being able to assign a raster position in geographic space. That's obviously very important. You know, the satellite collects that raster 
from a certain location, we can assign it coordinates and make sure that it's brought into the right place in the GIS system. Mathematical manipulation. Basically, in the broad sense, if you're a remote sensing specialist, you take these different rasters and then mathematically manipulate them in different ways. All the different mathematics, the raster calculator, and the different specially designed tools they've already programmed in. Remote sensing is mathematical manipulation of all these rasters in order to come up with some kind of solution. Whatever it is you're looking for.